chosen ones. The enemy wants to give you an opposed feeling about your destination. Chosen ones, listen up. This isn't going to be a long video. It's not going to be a short one, but it's not going to be a long one. Because I'm going to say what I got to say. But all I'm saying is, I don't know who this message is for today. Which one of you chosen ones out here need to hear this? But I need you to go ahead and adopt a mindset that I don't care who don't want to see me win. Excuse me. You got to adopt a mindset, family. I don't care who don't want to see me win. I'm still going to stand on what God promised for me, no matter what. Every time, every day, I'm going to stand on what God promised for me. I don't care who's around me, who's in proximity, who feel what. Right? But, see, I'm having spiritual burps. I always do this. Because no negative energy collapsed inside of my vessel when I'm operating on a high vibration, high frequency. But I'm going to stand on what God promised for me, chosen ones, because he will never leave me nor forsaken me. I'm telling you, family, the whole United States of America, the whole ecosystem, whatever, everybody could turn on you, bro. You want to be an adult so bad? You wanted to grow up so bad? You wanted to know what this world was about. But you are getting a taste of it and you're crying about it. You whining about it. You rolling over about it. You saying, poor me. You saying, why me? You're not, you're not taking it the way that a true champion, a true man, a true woman, a true warrior will take this lifetime because you're the chosen one. And guess what? Because you're the chosen one, you're going to have an uphill battle. But it makes it all the much greater, family, when you step on them scorpions and them snakes. When you step on that Jezebelian spirit. When you get to, hey, I made it. When you get to look in the mirror, it make you cry from happiness. Because you're standing on what God promised you. Besides standing on what people promise you. Because he will never leave or forsaken you. I don't care if you walk out on me, family. Uh, a lot of people are going to try to treat you wrong. A lot of people are going to try to treat you wrong, chosen ones. But guess what? A lot of people are going to try to mishandle you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, or use you because they already know uh, you're getting ready to receive God's promises. And when you receive God's promises, uh, chosen ones, they want to be acting like, hey, you know, I was here and, 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 and you know how many people, chosen ones, get their blessings and stuff, but because they are surrounded by the wrong people or they in the wrong type of environment, that the blessings don't really, uh, they don't feel right. Like you still got the blessing, but it don't feel right because you're not really able to just psychologically know that it was only me and God who did this because you got narcissistic people around you who keep putting it in your head that, Hey, Oh, um, you wouldn't do this if it wasn't for me. You wouldn't have did this if it wasn't for me. It feel much better when nobody can't tell you that you wouldn't have did nothing if it wasn't for them. Because you know good and well there was nowhere around you when you was doing what you was doing. So they can't even pull that card if they wanted to. 
And if they pull that card, you just gonna do it again to show them that they ain't help you do it. Like Jay Z said, it since you made me make another me. You know what I'm saying? That type of energy. But he isolated you, family. Because you're God's best. He isolated you so he could prepare you for your promise. That's why you're isolated, if you need to know. God not going to bless you around people like that. I just told you it's a waste of a blessing whenever people get blessed and they're surrounded by people. And you know what I'm saying? He wanted to isolate you because he wanted you to, to grow strength, spiritual strength, not just physical. But people ghosted you, uh, family. But so what? Stop putting your trust in people. Stop putting your trust in people. They can't promise you anything. Because God's promises work and their promises ain't, they don't. Even if they keep their promise one time, that's one time. God's promise is eternal, you feel me? It don't wear off. It don't shed off. It stays solid, you feel me? See, life is about the art of relying on things that's reliable, bro. If you could do that, bro, your life will change overnight. You feel me? If you begin to shift your reliance, this is why shadow work be working because you're literally shifting your integrity, like your internal energy, like you're shifting it. You're not you're not letting the gravity pull you towards repetitive cycles. Like you're changing the way you feel about a situation, which ultimately cripples the whole manipulative scheme of things. But let me let me let me keep going. Family, he's getting ready to give you abundance. He's gonna feel fulfill uh a lot inside of you and out and around you. A lot of people, uh their ego and pride, um, they're stuck in ego and pride, you know what I'm saying? And chosen ones, you want to be humble. That's the bottom line. You you just want to be humble. You know, that's that's what you gotta focus on. Just being humble. And uh, don't let no one distract you. I want you chosen ones to get back in position. Well, God wants you to also to get back in position so that you can get God's promises. You'll be surprised, chosen ones, how the enemy will work inside of, of, uh, of anyone to go against your promises. You know, if family members, friends, girlfriends, grand, you know, anybody could, could, could get it when it comes to terms of them being a Jezebel spirit, them just, you know what I'm saying? It just, it's crazy how that go. But you got to remember, like, you know what I'm saying? This is why I tell people to stay in the spiritual uh, realm, like awareness over physicality, because the more you put your mind on spirituality, the more it literally, uh, you see things clearer because you would think it would blind you because we were raised, a lot of us was raised away from God. Like my mom, like my parents would tell me here and there, uh, you know, they would like tell me about it and try to act like, but it wasn't like firm, like, okay, this is the laws. We live in by spirituality and this is how it's going to be. It was more so like, if you do something bad, God going to do this. But now that you've grown, you could you can have your own connection with God, and that's 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 something that a lot of people mistakenly don't take advantage of. Like it's it's like we think we like we was taught to think God was born and invisible and this and that. But like after eighteen, bro, you got nothing but space and opportunity for you to push that connection, and nobody around you can intervene with that. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody has the right to take God's place in your life. So that's that's the weak spot. That's the kryptonite of the enemy. Like, just like your actual physical father, right? Most people, a lot of people grow up without father, but the physical father, what would he do? He would step in, he'll be the gate, he'll be the gate in between you and anything that's gonna ruin your life. So, like, because we're over 18, bro, 
Like we got the opportunity to actually stick our foot in the doors and let God in. Like, okay, let me listen to what his rules would be. What would he say in this situation, that situation? And that literally is going to uh, ward off any type of demonic or just anti situations that come that will come across and it could be a little neglectful to the mind because you're not used to living on those terms you're used to living physicality you know since i was young i remember you know at some point i just started living fit everything was physical when i started playing sports then i started having sex everything started to be physical 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 and i didn't even see it happening but the reason why I didn't see it happening because no one ever really raised me on spiritual principalities from the get-go. So guess what? The physical world won't become more stronger, more dominant up here for me. And I'm going to start to look at food and lust and girls and money and these things secretly pulling you away from what? Spirituality. Because spirituality is, hey, I don't need money. I don't want money because it's going to come to me anyway. God is not brokenness. God is not poverty. So it's going to come to you regardless. The woman going to come to you regardless. If you build your kingdom upon God's foundation, it's going to always be right there for you. It's going to supply you. And you don't got a trip because... Yeah, chosen ones don't get it twisted. It's like sometimes you wake up and you're being attacked by narcissists. And it seems almost like unreal. Like, how am I getting so attacked if I'm with God? If if I know I've been praying and I've been doing X, Y, Z, how is it that all of this is, is, is uh, still getting in proximity so close to me like that? But you got to continue to pray. Because like I said in the title, the enemy wants you to give up. The enemy wants you, the enemy wants to give you an opposed feeling. Uh, an opposed feeling uh, about your destination. So you'll be on Friday thinking, okay, life is up and up. Like everything is just fine. It's where I want it. I feel good. I just ate some good food. I'm feeling healthier. I'm thinking smarter. Da, da, da. And it has seemed like 10 out of 10. 9 out of 10 for you. And then the next day, something will happen. Something small, medium, or large will happen. And it will just shift the whole... If you let it. Like, that's why I said you got to practice. Because it will shift the whole emotional frame. Work. like, And it will just leave you... like can, Because... Some things want to get close to you. That's already close to you enough, but guess what? It want to get even closer to guess what? To a distance where it can sneak in some sneak in some uh, some poison or some evil in your twenty four hours. You know, they they get you in the morning, middle of the day, whenever they can slip in some what? It could be the narcissist just giving you an attitude. It could be a small attitude too. It could be like a just a small spirit of neglect or a small slight. Or you could be trying to talk to the narcissist, which I don't advise to do, and then they'll just be ignoring you. And you and they not and the funny part is that like they're running this corny game, but you know that they're cheesy, like you know that this ain't even really you for real. But you about to really try to act like just because I'm entertaining it, you about to really go that way. But it's funny because the second you don't entertain it, they get mad. Why do they get mad, family? Because they not really built. They not even built on game. They not even smooth like that. But they get mad because you not stupid. So they so they so much suck at game that they need you to be stupid for them to keep running it. Versus them having enough of it so that whether you're smart or stupid, that they still are good at it. But they just see chosen ones. These people are weak. Um, and uh, Like I said, the enemy wants to give you a post feeling about your destination. Your destination 
is your is your destination and i need y'all to develop that mind frame like where i'm headed y'all gotta think like this where i'm headed is solely for me and it's so much for me that i know that don't no narcissist could stick on me like that no narcissist could stick in my heart no narcissist could stick on my energy no no narcissist could stick with me they want to stick with you to the point where your life is not unrolling and unfolding no more. Like they want to stick with you and they want to use you like a toothpaste tube or like a toothbrush. They want to use you to the point where when you get done with them, guess what? You don't feel like you're that guy or that woman no more. You don't feel like I told you, they want to discourage you spiritually, emotionally. They want to break, they want to, they want to extract all your energy. They want to extract and re withdraw all of your energy. They want to pull from it all your energy, all your all your uh, uh, creative energy, all of your all of your life force, all of your. They want to come around and they want to sniff it out and they want to get to playing playing mind manipulation and, and witchcraft and and games and. And this is the type of energy that I totally, I don't, I don't shun it, family, but I don't shun it. Well, I do, because to, to shun means to avoid. It means to reject. It means to dodge. So, like, when I say I don't shun it, what I meant by that is like, I don't, I respect it. Like a wise man taught me to, told me to respect toxicity enough to not. To, to, to avoid it so it's like when i'm when i say respect it if you're cool then you know what's hot and cool and hot can't exist in the same situation so you have to get away from hotness because that's the bottom that's what this is all about like that's what this is all about at the end of the day getting away from uh toxicity like not even toxicity but things that aren't for you in life like that's just the bottom line like escapism you know what i'm saying flight like, staying away from things that ain't for you and admitting it to yourself like this ain't for me bro like you know what i'm saying and that's just being real, like that's being real, and that's allowing life to un life unfolds. It's waiting to unfold for the person who is like that, the real person. It don't unfold for the fake person. It have to unfold for the real person. You know what I'm saying? That's just facts. It's facts that might hurt the logic, but it never hurts the emotional, and never hurts the inner. You know what I'm saying? The inner you. The interior you, the the gut you, is the best the best you. You know what I'm saying? That's the best you. That's the healthy you. That's the restorative you. See, I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a healthy guy. I'm not an unhealthy guy. I'm a restorative guy. It's just like I could be broken down, I could build myself back up. And the enemy don't like that. I know that. The enemy don't like that. I know that that's how physics work. That's how science work. Nothing is broken. It's just broken. Like when you grow up, you you think when, when glass break, the reason why you say to yourself, man, it's nothing else I could do with this is because you don't want to cut your fingers on the glass. You don't want to get all the little pieces up. You don't want to risk and waste your time. What, an hour or something you're going to have to put in or, or more than more than that, way more than an hour. So, when you see stuff like I told you, the spiritual and the physical is two different things, right? So if you've been broken, you can be fixed. But the enemy don't want you to ever notice because the enemy gets to laughing as soon as you feeling like it's the end of the road for me. Even in the most heinous of moments and the most craziest of craziest times, you still got to have faith because faith can be the faith is the fix is the thing that fixes. I believe it. I, I, I believe I have faith. So it's going to fix.
to have faith is to have hope, is to have confidence, is to have religion, is to have assurance, is to have uh, 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 loyalty. So if I'm loyal, if I got this loyalty, if I got this reassurance, if I got this belief, then who can discourage me? Like I told you, it's people in your environment that will automatically try to create a concoction of an algorithm of a, of, a, of a situation to throw you off. But in your mind, you got to have the faith. You got to have the belief. You got to have the loyalty that, hey, I'm going to stick with it emotionally, interiorly, not, not even just psychologically and things got to look a certain way for me to believe it. In here, in my heart, in my, in my core, I'm going to think to myself that, hey, I'm going to fix myself to believe it, even if it don't make sense. That's how you beat the system. You got to you gotta fix yourself to believe that I'm good, even if, even if it don't, even if it's all over, if it don't make sense. I got, if people don't think I'm crazy, then I'm not, then I'm not really faithful. You got to see it like that. If people don't think I'm crazy, then I'm doing it wrong. Because they got to look at me and be like, oh, he's crazy. Yes, because I see what people can't see. I see the finish line when y'all see the and y'all see the the, the, um, the the race ain't even, y'all think the race ain't even start yet. I already see how I'm going to get to the finish line. I already see how I'm going how I'm to live after the finish line. I already see how life going to be for me after the finish line. Charles Jones, I'm about to end this video. I love y'all. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me see you on the next video.